This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Don't let your kids watch it! Hey there, Artie! Continue? Is this the end? Or is there... No, there's still a little more. But we're dead, so is it gonna be, like, just an epilogue? My head was pounding. The sky was bright. It was cold, too. It hurt. Each sensation I felt led to a new and different one awakening. When it came to, I was lying face first on a dry riverbed. There is no way in heck that Keiji survived that. None. There, that's Takano writing. I don't know if that's Takano writing. I don't think they've, they've ever confirmed that. It could be. A few body parts hurt a lot. The skin over a bunch of my joints was torn, turned blue or red or oozing blood. I could tell it was my bones that were in pain from the agony I felt whenever I moved. I looked up and saw how high the bridge from which I had fallen was. Considering I dropped from there, it was a miracle that I could open my eyes again. Right next to me was a broken upside-down car seat, which I guess some pranksters had brought here. Maybe this thing had been conveniently lying right under me, allowing me to escape instant death. Well, isn't that lucky? Miraculous. Of course, I didn't know whether this miracle was fortunate or unfortunate. I'd failed to die, and now I was still stuck in this insane world. How long had I been unconscious for? The sun was high in the sky, so it looked like only one or two hours had passed. But my body's sluggishness didn't make it feel at all like it was so short a time had gone by. Mentally, I would felt like I'd been asleep here for a decade. <laughs> Fell from a suspension bridge, hit a ridiculously hard rock floor. Ow! The more a feeling returned to my body, the more the pain flooded in. Oof. It hurt so much, it would have been better to have not woken up. I needed to get to a doctor. Yeah, to Coach's Clinic. The term Coach's Clinic brought memories back one after another. Memories I wish I hadn't recalled. Satoko was no longer on the bridge. She would have returned to Hinamizawa by now. And she would... Put on some clothes, go to the clinic, get a checkup, and report on how crazy I had seemed. The police were waiting for me, without a doubt. This time they would find out for real that I'd killed her uncle and arrested me, or would they just send me to a mental institution like I thought they might? Still, I didn't care which it was. Please, someone, stop all this pain. You can boil me or cook me after that, whatever you want. I began to walk unsteadily, just limping around. How was he able to walk after that? Literally the one time him screaming would make sense, he's not screaming. Yeah, presumably he does yeah, presumably he doesn't have the capability of screaming. I went downstream and then through an animal trail like path in the woods. I walked haphazardly, searching for a path I knew. Eventually, I finally came across a familiar road and set off towards the clinic. Not to my house, but to the clinic, which had treated me like a lunatic. It was hot and humid. There was no wind and the air was stagnant. For a while now, I'd been smelling the terrible stench of burned eggs, and it made my face scrunch up. And then, at last, I noticed something. I couldn't hear any cicadas. It was the first time I'd heard Hinamizawa be so utterly silent. When I fought back, it seemed like birds had always chirped in the morning, cicadas always cried loudly in the afternoon, and Higurashi always rose up in the chorus in evening. Always something to hear. I couldn't hear a single insect. The only thing I could hear was the rustling of the wind brushing the treetops. I'd never experienced this sort of quiet before. Even the only sound coming from the trees lacked life somehow. The trees were yellow. No, they're definitely green. And many leaves were spread on the ground, despite it being too early for autumn. Even the weeds that had been growing so persistently at the side of the road had been yellowed, browned, and lost their vigor. Only the sunlight itself was of the June Hinamizawa I knew. And yet it seemed like the seasons had switched all of a sudden. How long were you out? Looking at the fallen leaves and rotting weeds that led to me to a spot, a few small insects turned on their backs. They weren't moving. They were corpses. I looked closer to see insect corpses scattered all around, like a child had collected them as samples and then strewn them about. What? The stench. What was it? It was terrible. Like burned eggs. Combined with all the bug corpses and leaves falling from the trees in summer, had someone sprayed herbicides or pesticides around here? Even at school, we apparently fumigate. They call it pest disinfection or something once or twice a year. If you are actually right about the world ending, like, it's gonna be some wild big brain DX strats. 
I hadn't run into anybody, despite how bright it was outside. It was mid-afternoon, and yet it felt like I was sauntering about at midnight. Well, with this smell, nobody would be walking around outside. Just what was this, anyway? There was no sound. No noise. Not even a breath. Hidabizawa was silent. Man! That would be creepy! That would be, like, a liminal space right there. Every <laughs> oh no, Thanos snapped everyone, including the cicadas. The school would come into view right after turning this corner. And yet I couldn't hear any commotion at all. None of the shouts or grunts of the children always made. It was simply quiet. Just as pretending to ignore the silence had grown intolerable, I saw the school. And finally I heard something. It was the sound of a few trucks. There were a few very tall trucks parked in the schoolyard idling. About ten workers in raincoats were unloading things from their trunks. It was hot and humid, even in my casual clothing. I couldn't imagine how unbearable that must have been. <sighs> then I remembered. Our school was rented from the Forest Service Field bu Office building, wasn't it? It wasn't strange at all for Forest Service trucks to be doing some kind of work in the schoolyard. Besides, what did forest rangers do anyway? I felt bad for them having to work in such heat, and with such a stench about. They were taking colorful cargo out of the truck and lining it up in the schoolyard. They were containers, fairly large ones, inside multicolored patchwork bags. Heavy, too. They were being carried in pairs. They lined them up very neatly, like tuna at a riverside fish market. Several dozens, hundreds of tuna were completely filling the fairly wide schoolyard up. I forgot my pain for a little while, captivated by this big forest ranger job I'd never seen before. How do you just forget about the pain after falling off a bridge? As I stood there, watching in a daze, the people in raincoats working on the other side noticed me. One of them pointed me out, and they shouted a few things back and forth. I thought they might yell at me for getting in their way, so I decided to leave post-haste. But then, two trucks drove up behind me. I stepped aside, and they entered the schoolyard. Sheets covering their trucks, I could tell they were completely full. As they passed, there was an awful smell that made me want to choke. It wasn't the same burned egg smell as before, but an even worse one, like rotten crab meat. What on earth was it? I'd been enshrouded in one terrible stench after another all day. Then, certain white letters emblazoned on the side of the passing trucks caught my eye. Like I said, he would probably not wake up if the pain was too big, yeah. Ground Self-Defense Forces. What? Self-Defense Forces? L like the army? Why was the army in the schoolyard? Oi, Kimi. Suddenly, someone slapped me on the shoulders from behind. I turned around, and a canopied SDF jeep was parked there. Sarge, uh, what are you doing here? This SDF person had on a green raincoat and a gas mask like in the movies. Oh, sweet. Carrying a compressed air cylinder. He didn't look normal. There wasn't an inch of exposed skin anywhere. When I tried to talk, I stretched a wound on my head. It made the SDF people exchange glances. I couldn't see their faces for their masks, but they seemed surprised. I sort of live here. I haven't been home in a while. I don't know if his parents are just totally oblivious to all of this. I have not played any Persona game, no. My address is boop! After seeing me tell them my name and address without hesitation, one of the SDF people watching from the Jeep started talking into a radio. Why are there all these military people here? Survivor? There is no way. There is no way DX called this again. Or is it just like everyone died of random stuff and they thought it was a disaster? Ish. I was prepared to go along with the police, but the SDF? I couldn't help but think it seemed a bit much. They urged me into the back of the jeep, and then they told me to put on this gigantic gas mask. I did so, and one of the troops fiddled around with it, strapping it tightly to me. It was heavy, hard to see out of, hot, and difficult to breathe. What the heck? If everyone's wearing a gas mask, like, is there radiation stuff happening? Or are they fumigating the place? Like, what the heck? So just looking at a world through the lenses, it made me lose my sense of reality. Yeah, you lost it a long time ago, pal. My breathing sounded like some giant monster through the mask. At this point, I had no idea what was happening. 
so much trepidation, I asked the trooper, adjusting my mask. Hey, don't answer a question with more questions. I was the one asking you. <laughs> How are you alive? Are that surprised me. Satoka pushed me off the bridge on Tuesday, the 21st. Oh, we were out for a full day. That meant I'd been asleep on that riverbed for an entire day. <sighs> Had my question been that difficult for him? None of the troopers would answer me. The one in the driver's seat talking on his own radio turned on the vehicles. He turned the dial and some broadcast station or another came on. I started to listen to the voice of a radio announcer I was familiar with. Yori, Shushou Kante de Okonaure Mashita. Kishadan Kara no Jietai no Saigai Shidoga, Jinsokuni Okonaure Nakata Kotonga, Zenle no Nai, Mizu no Dai Saigai ni Chokkitsu Shita no Dewa Nai Kato no Shitsu no Dai Saigai ni Chokkitsu Shita no Dewa Nai Kato no Shitsu no Dai Saigai ni Chokkitsu Shita no Dewa Nai Kato no Shitsu no Dai Saigai ni Chokkitsu Shita no Dewa Nai Kato no Shitsu no Dai Saigai ni Chokkitsu Shita no Dewa Nai Kato no Shitsu no Dai Saigai ni Chokkitsu Shita no I don't think he was a あった。あった。あった。あった。あった。あった。あった。あった。あった。あった。あった。あった。あった。あった。あった。あった。あった。あった。あった。あった。あった。あった。あった。あった。あった。あった。あった。あった。あった。あった。あった。あった。あった。あ
And so the authorities, in the hour or so it took for the governor to grasp the situation and sober up, did nothing but accumulate information. また県としても大災害を想定したマニュアルが用意されておらず対応が常に後手に回ってしまったのが致命的でした on the advice of the prefectural police, the governor requested a disaster relief mission from the SDF. By the time the chemical defense unit, equipped with protective equipment, arrived on the scene, eight hours had already passed since the incident's outbreak. Does this mean, does this mean the only two survivors are Keiichi and Shion? Because Shion doesn't live in Hinamizawa? Is that what we're getting at here? This is gonna end with Shion being like, Hi! <laughs> That's what you get for making fun of Satoshi. I didn't do that though! Uh huh. Yeah, I know. This is crazy. This is like some, some, like, uh. Not Jamestown. Jonastown? What? That place where, like, the cult poisoned everyone? Uh, no, 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 weird. All households in the Hinemezawa village region were wiped out. There were over 1,000 victims. What the heck? The SDF is still confirmed. How? What? How? How much toxic gas was in that truck? Oh, we see hit the truck that had toxic gas and it, it wiped out thousands of people in one village? What? Nah. I don't, I don't buy this. The SDF is confirming the situation on the ground, but the results predicted to only increase that number. The SDF is confirming the situation on the ground, but the results predicted to only increase that number. The SDF is confirming the situation on the ground, but the results predicted to only increase that number. The SDF is confirming the situation on the ground, but the results predicted to only increase that number. The SDF is confirming the situation on the ground, but the results predicted to only increase that number. Oh, they thought it was a truck, but it was actually okay. How did nobody notice that there was a volcano in Hinamizawa? Oh, so the SDF is confirming that the volcano was in Hinamizawa. Yeah, again, how the heck did Keiichi survive and everyone else die? Oh, so the SDF is confirming that the volcano was in Hinamizawa. ガスの中でも事故例の多い硫化水素によるものだと考えられます。高い濃度であれば非常に危険な場所です。高い濃度であれば非常に危険な場所です。高い濃度であれば非常に危険な場所です。高い濃度であれば非常に危険な場所です。
Where was Hinamizawa Village anyway? Oh no, he's gonna be like, I wish for the village to be destroyed, and then it was! <laughs> and then he's gonna get thrown into a straitjacket. Someplace deep in the mountains, right? Names of places I'd heard about on the radio were always like that. They were all places I'd never heard of, much less knew the locations of. Wiped out? What does that mean? Don't they usually say how many died and how many were injured? How many people were alive? Where, where did everyone evacuate to? Eventually, we came into view of Coach's Clinic. For the first time, I saw the flag of Japan hanging on a pole outside. Japan's circular sun hung down as though exhausted. Many SDF tents had been set up in the clinic's big parking lot, and many strict security vehicles were parked there as well. When they saw the jeep coming, men in white clothing and gas masks came running out of the clinic, frantic and carrying a stretcher. And because of my owls, they forced me to lay in the stretcher anyway. People who seemed like doctors were looking at me and notifying others of my condition via radio. And then, from the clinic entrance, people lying on stretchers were brought outside to replace me. Judging by their clothing, they were from Hinamizawa, and that's how I knew they were victims. They brought the stretchers in front of a truck. Two troops, holding shoulders and legs, were like some kind of baggage, picked them up and threw them into the truck. Or the trunk. In the trunk of the truck, people's bodies piled in heaps. They were just like baggage. And that told me they were already nothing but shells. At that moment, I remembered all those colorful sacks filling the trunks, and them lined up in the schoolyard like a fish market. Hundreds of empty shells. Corpses. 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 Okay, you don't have to say it 20 freaking times! Baga! The troops carrying the sacks answered with a humble salute. The world didn't need this insane variation of Hinamizawa. My... my final... wish... again... it was granted. He's gonna wish for him to die. I didn't understand anything anymore. None of it mattered. I wished, I cursed, and then it happened the next day. Then please, tomorrow morning, let me die. That insane night, it's still going on. Please, please end it already! Called it! Five seconds before it actually happened. <laughs> That's a shout. Suddenly, the world didn't matter to me anymore. I wasn't interested in their cries. I could hear the voice of a man crying and screaming in my ears. Nobody deserves to die. Those words came from his heart. They were so, so commonplace, and they soaked into my heart, too. Maybe it was a mistake to take someone's life, even if it was to save Satoko. If... If this is the price I had to pay, this horrible tragedy, then this is a little much, Oyashiro sama Why? Why did you never punish me? Come to think of it, Satoko said something. Oyashiro samas actual curse never goes for the target at first, but kills everyone they love before that. Oyashiro samas curse. It was a convenient excuse that I told myself at the very end that it wasn't my curse that destroyed it, but Oyashiro samas Given that I was in a stretcher, this next bit might have been a bit more obvious. The last of all, I realized one thing. Yeah. Today. I had not heard those footsteps following me. Even once. And now, I was liberated. As the cries of the Higarashi, I couldn't have been hearing, filled the mind. Their tearful ensemble was the only funeral march I had. Liberation escaped at last. Oh, man. 
June 22nd, 1983, early morning. Hey, Hyper Gamer. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. A widespread disaster occurred in the Hinamizawa village, Shishibone, the redacted prefecture. Volcanic gas, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen sulfide erupted from the Onigafuchi swamp, one of the Hinamizawa area's water sources, and spread throughout the entire village. Is that because we threw the motorcycle in? Wait, is that because we threw the motorcycle in? There were 1,200 victims. 20 have gone missing. The catastrophe was unprecedented, forcing local governments to evacuate approximately 600,000 people. According to later investigations, magma pools and hot springs were uncovered directly under Oni Onigafuji Swamp, and the gas that gushed from it was determined to be the cause of the disaster. In addition, directly after the incident broke out, many came forth claiming this disaster was a curse based in Hinamizawa village legends, first sparking a wave of chaos. There were apparently local legends of a curse spreading a miasma, destroying the village. And some scholars believe a similar gas disaster may have happened in the past and remained part of these legends. More extreme periodicals suggested this was an extension of the strain of freak death incidents that have been happening in the recent years at Hinamizawa Village, stirring interest in theories about this curse of Oyoshiro-sama. In addition, relatives of those in Hinamizawa Village who had escaped the disaster complained of sickness afterwards and were hospitalized. Some of them even died of unknown causes, fervor encouraging such extreme opinions. On top of that, several relatives professing to be possessed by Oyoshiro-sama's curse committed suicide in strange ways and the impact the disaster has had on the entire nation can no longer be ignored. <sighs> Wild visions of terrible toxic gas sneaking around in the middle of the night killing people spilled across the country, causing a steady stream of people complaining of insomnia, difficulty breathing, headache, dizziness, etc. Some who identified themselves as being obsessed began doing odd things. Most of them were mistakenly attributed by the tabloid press. But afterwards, some even began to call the mental issues arising from the Hinamizawa tragedy the Hinamizawa Syndrome. The Hinamizawa village region, the object of all kinds of rumors and speculation, is currently closed off, and even flying overhead is prohibited. The prohibition was, at one point, undone as a result of a decrease in the gas's density, but that autumn another gas burst was confirmed, leaving the area being cordoned off again. Word is that the area is sound asleep, all traces of its former life intact and left to rot. Only one survivor remains, Keiichi Maibara, age redacted, who lived at redacted Hinamizawa village. At the time of rescue, he had some trouble breathing due to fluid buildup in his lungs, but as a result of life-saving procedures, he was kept alive. Oh! He's currently in a general hospital somewhere in the prefecture. The press have been asking him for some time, but all interviews are being refused. What did he see in Hinamizawa? What happened between June 21st and June 22nd in Hinamizawa village? Today he remains silent, unwilling to speak of it. Great Hinamizawa disaster and memoriam list. Jiro Tomatake? Possibly committed suicide. Investigation. Mio Takano strangled to death in the mountains. Body was burnt to a crisp. Uh, Uisi went missing during an investigation. Investigation continues. Uh, Katsuya went missing during an investigation. Investigation continues. Iri committed suicide. Furude possibly murdered? How is that not a murder? No, oh, Reina died. So did Mion. So did Oreo. So did Satoko, so did Tepe. <sighs> Tepe went missing on the 26th. Wait, he didn't die? What? Yeah, this is going too fast. Hang on. No! Teacher died! No! No! Not teacher. Oh, I saw that, Tepe. He disappeared on the 22nd. Not when on the... What? Okay, well that just blows all of my things I thought I knew as fact out of the water. So he was still alive somehow. They both went missing. Maybe nobody... No, they would have confirmed he was missing beforehand, though. What the heck is going on? So that's what they mean by you're not going to be able to have a theory on that. I love how it's like, Rika, her body's on. It might be murder. Like, how, how the fuck would it not be a murder? <laughs> he was disemboweled. <laughs> the crows did it. Dear Lord. Okay, why is the music this happy? 
Higurashi when they cry. <laughs> that was, literally everyone died in that ending. Happy music. <laughs> She only survived but committed suicide at the hospital. Mm. June Exif in 2003. This is a long time later. An elderly, an elderly couple living in the Osaka prefecture discovered a cassette tape while organizing the possessions of their son, who passed away eight years ago. Their son went missing when his fishing boat capsized in 1995. He was 47 at the time of his death. Eight years later, in 2003, they had begun to organize their son's remains in order to organize their minds, and they came across uh, the cassette tape in question. From 1975 to 1989, the deceased had experimented working as a journalist for a photography periodical, and this tape is thought to have been created during that time. Hmm. The label on the tape read, 11-28-1983, Keiji Mayabara. It is thought that the tape was recorded during an interview with Keiji Mayabara, the only survivor of the Great Hinamizawa disaster that occurred in June of 1983. As the only person who lived through the disaster on the night of the June 21st, shrouded in mystery, many interested parties attempted to question him, but he never once spoke physically to anyone in a public place. Therefore, this tape caused quite a stir, possibly being of extremely high value. Wait, so his parents survived? Too? <laughs> After this, the sound quality dramatically decreases. Did he cover the recording device or something? Parents of the journalist, not parents of... Yeah, okay. It says parents died, okay. The, the, the deceased list went too fast for me to be able to read it all and process it and talk about it, so. Yamani。それは大災害の夜、つまり21日から22日にかけての深夜のこと。いえ。うん。21日の火曜日の朝です。それで次の日の昼間に目を覚ましたわけですから。一日半はそこで気を失ってたと思います。I <sighs> There's no need for that. I have... I've streaming this. I have the stream VOD on YouTube, and I also have the recording, too. So, like, I can always just look back myself. There's no need for that. さて、次に圭一くんが落ちたという釣り橋なんだけど、地図で言うとここだよね。神社の裏から林道を抜けていた<笑><笑> For a little while, Keiji Maibara mutters the word impossible several times. If that volcanic gas occurred because we pushed a motorcycle in and that's why it didn't happen in the other two chapters, that would be incredible. シミツナ模型を使っ
君が気絶していたという河原流れ込むんだよガスが It would have looked... Yeah, exactly. よく言ってる意味がわからないです、ね。つまり、君が本当にこの河原で気絶していたなら、君は丸一晩、猛毒の火山の火山の火山の火山の火山の火山の火山の火山の火山の火山の火山の火山の火山の火山の火山の火山の<laughs> I don't think he's going to be able to get that much. Was this recording really taken of Keiji Mabara? Some of us harbor suspicions. <laughs> And he wonders why people think he should be in a mental ward. The journalist and Keiji member, I'll both laugh for a while. To verify its authenticity, I had the others in the Maibara family check the tapes with his voice in it. However, the sound was not clear and much time had passed, so the relatives I checked with couldn't remember what he sounded like. I was unable to gain positive proof it was actually his voice. Doubts also remain regarding the date 11 28 written on the tape. Well, I don't think I'm going to believe it, but I'm going to kill you. ハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハ
Go! Wow, great. Mm, fantastic. Because his body was never... That, that's right. That's true. But he still confessed to Coach. And... Like, okay. Satoko... She disappeared before anyone got back. Okay. But he told Coach... He's like, I murdered this guy. And then Coach was on the phone with Uisi. He would have told Uisi that, like, hey, he confessed to the crime. Even if Uisi didn't find the body, he's still going to be like, hey, I'm going to take you down to the station. We're going to have a chat. But he's just like, nah, Coach is probably lying. Wouldn't it be the first time. Uh-oh. <laughs> 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 Is this truly Keiji Maribara's voice? The authenticity of this recording is still wrapped in mystery. Hmm. <laughs> That's when you end the interview. Joe Rogan ain't putting up with that. そうだな。今回は一つ。あ、やけじみだったから。じゃあ、あんたは逆に水だ。オッケー。You're this is disturbing. Yo, farts! <laughs> <laughs> that is okay. That that took me by surprise. I was not expecting a CG of crazy KG in a straight jacket. So he did bust into the mental institution. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Most sane 4chan user. I don't, honestly. I don't blame him for that. It's still creepy. The recording ends in the middle of Keiji Maibara's laughter. And Keiji Maibara. Late on the night of 11-30-1983, two days after the interview, he suddenly died from a high fever, cause unknown. Records remain of the strange words he kept giving after pressing the call button the day before he died. An extra set of footsteps. Oh. That was a pretty creepy ending. Higurashi still got it in the horror department. Alright. A new scenario has been unlocked. All cast review session. Oh yeah, we gotta do that. Oh, does it have to be at Hooters though? We didn't we went so well. We did we did so good with not having Hooters in the story. The great Hinamisawa disaster learned what happened next.